This channel is supported by my books, including my new book, Fishing the Edge, Techniques and Tales from Surf, Boat, and Kayak, and you can learn more at johnskinnerfishing.com and on Amazon. So yeah, you're going to get to see how Old Town kayaks and canoes are made, and it is very interesting, but this is the area. Um, this is Moosehead Lake, Maine, not too far from the factory, and I was lucky enough to be able to spend a couple of days here on um, a media trip, and yeah, and I'm going to have just a little bit of fishing after the, the factory tour, but yeah, what a just absolutely gorgeous area. So hey, during the tour, it's going to get kind of loud. Um, I'll have to voice over in just a couple spots, but uh, yep, it, it's uh, it's worth watching. It's very interesting to see how they do this. And I'll start by showing how they make kayaks like this Old Town Sportsman Autopilot that if you've watched my channel, you've seen me fish out of many times. So hey, if you like this video, please hit the like button. If you're not already a subscriber, please subscribe and hit that notification bell. And making a kayak like this starts with powder. We'll find powder. What's pretty neat is they have this vacuum system set up to where it vacuums it up into those silos for color, like you see on that auto that autopilot that's leaning or that pedal drive that's leaning up right there. It's probably 80 pounds of orange, 20 pounds of black, and 10 pounds of gray. And so they'll on the back side, you'll see it, you can see it over here. On the front of that silo, there's a, there's a little scale or a little thing to import put how much pounds of black you want and spits it out of a bucket. You've got it, a bucket of the black and orange. These are our molds. Um, these molds are staged in the back side of the oven. These are the molds that we're rotating in and out all the time. They're made out of aluminum. They're cast aluminum. And it's a very, it's a very intense capital investment to make a mold. So we have a full-time shop that maintains our molds and modifies our molds. So if we do a design change three years after we launch something, our internal mold shop will do that change to the mold. So our uh, engineers will make a, uh, a foam replica of the boat and iterate on foam. So we've got a big CNC machine that will carve out the shape of the boat. And then they'll put like a line X material, like a truck bed liner on it. And we'll test the hell out of it. That probably 20 times before we dial in our actual mold, our finished mold, before we send it to the foundry to get cast. When we get the boat back from the foundry, then we have a dialing in process of running tests to make sure that it has a uniform thickness throughout the entire mold. And if it doesn't, we add things like these heat rods. And what that does is it draws heat to the areas of, that are prone to thinning. To that area and help that plastic to set up so that it's a uniform thickness throughout the entire boat. And you'll notice some molds have none and some have a bunch. And if you've got like a complex mold like the autopilot that have real hard 90 degree corners, the plastic just tends to roll over the corners versus setting up into the corners. And so that's where adding some of those heat rods will help draw that plastic onto those hard corners.
them off the edge that's over mold that they cut off. And again, that all gets recycled. That's that's how thick our plastics are on that single layer process that shows you kind of how thick it gets. And I do all the pre-cutting of the hatches and the drain plug. They take all the over mold off and then they load it up onto those carts and then they go through the production line to add the handles, the seats. This is a production line right here. So after the boats actually come out of the ovens, they get staged on racks. And then we have um, three shifts a day that come in here to, to work the ovens as well as build out the boats. So they're going through a boat test and then they get all of their handles and rod holders and um, hatches all installed in the final production process here when they're wrapped up. It's been so busy lately that they're not sticking around with the warehouse very long. They get right loaded onto a truck and shipped off. We're three ships a day. We've been seven days a week for the last three years. We're just now going back to six days a week. We do have one oven that runs 24-7. yesterday you were in autopilot and you were in pedal drive this is one of the pedal drive lines so all the stuff the handles seats everything gets added and at the very end of the process one of our drives that have been built out over there whether it's motorized or pedal drive gets assigned to the boat serial number so if you um, if you have an issue a warranty issue down the road you've got a drive that's specifically assigned to each boat haul if you buy a boat on Facebook marketplace and you can kind of track down whether it's an original haul or original drive uh, if you call our customer service team. So the drives, all the pedal drives, the actual drives themselves are sourced from our, our factory that makes the drive unit. We make all of the pods, we wrote them all those here, and we put all of them together with our production team over there. Our Minkota drives, like I was saying earlier, it's our sister company. So we worked with the engineering team over there and we actually took a pre-existing power drive model Minn Kota motor to make it fit for our, our kayaks. And so those are all Minn Kota parts customized for our platform. That's something that's really unique. So in kayak fishing, motorized is really, motor and pedal has taken the industry by storm. Like all anglers want a pedal or motor, motorized model. What's unique about our product offering on the motorized side is it's fully integrated so you don't have to buy a kayak and then figure out a diy solution to fixing a bow mounted trolling motor to it or some aftermarket motorized system it's all done you just buy the boat and source a battery and you've got a fully integrated motorized experience and then this is where we're building out our pedal and motorized consoles so we take the rotor molded um, consoles that are fixed to the pedal drives and we put them together over here and then we take the the box of uh, box of Minn Kota parts and we assemble the autopilot motors and the 106 powered by Minn Kota motors over here and then they they go over to the production line and get married up to the boat so we've got two processes, well, really three processes in this building. This is one of them. This is our thermoforming oven. So this makes a canoe in four minutes. So you see the sheets on the plywood pallets up, up. You got green and red. Those are sheets of uh, plastic that we uh, source from our plastic manufacturer. We load it into this turnstile oven over here. There's a heat coil on the surface of that red um, turnstile that heats up the plastic and the plastic bags out and then it comes around the turnstile gets vacuum sealed onto that mold right there and it spits out our Saranac canoe so it's like the base model 
uh, recreational canoe that you see at like Dick's Sporting Goods, some of the larger box retailers. They're able to make a canoe in four minutes with this. Yeah, definitely too loud here with the drills, um, but yet yeah, they're finishing off those Saranacs, and um, hopefully you heard Ryan say yeah, they can make one every four minutes with that machine. He said they'll run that machine for weeks, 24 hours a day, and just make stacks of these things, and, and these guys pull them off and do all the finishing touches. Okay, so that was thermoforming. You've seen roto molding, and now you're gonna see the three-layer canoes. So you've got your outside layer, which starts in the mold first and then you've got the two boxes in the middle of the mold there that then release the foam layer and then the inside layer the foam layer is really the same material but it has an additive to allow it to expand like that it allows for more buoyancy and durability so it makes a heavier boat but it's much more durable and you can drag it over rocks for many many years without having to do anything but so that's our three layer process this is like all the trimmings that come off of the canoe after we make them. And again, that gets chopped and reprocessed and made into resin powder that we buy again. Get a good uh, view of all our boats stored and you see the ovens off in the distance there. All right, before we get to the fishing, yeah, just check out this overview. Just, you know, amazing volume of kayaks, canoes, and, uh, you know, well, the ovens and everything being done here. It's uh, really an impressive facility. Some facts about the, the business, um, we've got between 150 to 250 people that work here depending on the time of year. Many of them have worked here their entire lives and had family members, uh, you know, multi-generation uh, people that have worked and their parents or their grandparents or aunts and uncles worked here. And it's been that way since 1898, which is super cool. We're one of the bigger manufacturing businesses in the area. We have people driving in from all over, but this has really been a source of pride for people that live in this area. Oh, so that was cool, but hey, the fishing was rather brutal. Um, so yeah, you see a couple of kayaks there. There were eight of us, eight boats out for six hours. A grand total of five fish caught, and we were fishing for trout and landlocked salmon. And on the left, uh, basically you're trolling a fly. I never heard about trolling fly rods. I guess it's something they do there. And to the right is a weighted keel with a spoon. And this is right at the end of the trip. Um, and it's actually calmed down now. In the morning it was much rougher. And we have electronics. We're maintaining around two miles an hour and just trolling and trolling and trolling and trolling. Um, so I'm going to be very happy to see that rod bend. Okay, a small landlocked salmon and the, and the five fish that were caught were all these things. I'm just happy to actually see one. But oh, what a beautiful place. Um, I, I thank the, the Old Town staff for getting me out here. It was just, it was really a, a great trip and uh, a beautiful area. And I love factory tours. This is like, I've done factory tours now for Steigercraft boats, Ford F-150s, Penn Internationals. Um, my favorite was actually <laughs> Utz Potato Chips. Hey, this is the lodge we stayed in which is Wilson's Cabins on Moosehead Lake. So, hey, if you like this video, please hit the like button. If you're not already a subscriber, please subscribe and hit that notification bell. And don't forget my new book, Fishing the Edge, Techniques and Tales from Surf, Boat, and Kayak. You can learn more at johnskinnerfishing.com and on Amazon.